Hello, and welcome to 2021. We're going to be discussing about paleontology of Georgia. This is a new series where I will be discussing the various different types of fossils that is found in Georgia and the various different geological history that is found here in the state. Today, our first episode, we're going to be talking about fossils from the Cambrian all the way up to the Ordovician. The fossils from this time period are, are roughly about from the Cambrian, about 505 to 497 million years old. And the first fossils that we're going to be talking about are called archaeocyathids. Archaeocyathids are actually sponges, and that were, that were actually some of the first reef builders in the Cambrian period. And they were actually the oldest fossils in Georgia. And uh, they may not look like much, but archaeocyathids are the oldest fossils in Georgia. So these are archaeocyathids right here. These are found in Cartersville, and they come from a rock unit called the Shady Dolomite. The Shady Dolomite is a rock unit that is preserved in Georgia that is about 516 million years old that dates back from the lower portion of the Cambrian period in Earth's history. So the archaeocyathids are actually found in these blocks of dolomite. In fact, archaeocyathids, again, are the first reef builders, and they would have actually built limestone. So we typically think of reef builders are like, you know, corals, but these are actually existing way before corals came up onto the scene during the Ordovician period. So these are actually the first reef builders in Earth's history, and they actually build their own limestones, which is actually pretty interesting. And this is these are some of the first animals to do that type of thing in Earth's history, and they are actually preserved in Northwest Georgia in Cartersville and the Shady Dolomite. Georgia actually has a very well good variety of Cambrian fossils. The fossils that are actually found can comprise of archaeocyathids, which are some of the oldest, but we also do find impressions of things like trilobites. There's one rock unit in the uh, in Rome County called the Rome Formation that is composed of siltstones and mudstones that preserves impressions of trilobites and other types of trace fossils. But the rock unit that actually preserves more fossils are is one called the Conasaga Formation. The Conasaga Formation is composed of shale and mudstone that's preserved about during the late Cambrian to the middle Cambrian, about 505, which is the middle Cambrian, about 497 million years ago, which is the late Cambrian. During that time, Georgia was actually under a tropical shallow sea that would have preserved these types of fossils from the, in, from the Cambrian period. Typically, the fossils that we do find are things like trilobite impressions, but we do also find Burgess shale type preservation. And when I say that, I mean Burgess Shale comes from the Canada, comes from Canada from the Stephen Formation. The Burgess Shale is actually one of the most famous fossil ecologies in the world that preserves soft body remains. And we do actually find that type of preservation in Georgia. So the typical fossils that you may find are things like the impressions of trilobites. This particular trilobite is about 497 million years old, and it comes from Murray County, Georgia, up in northwest Georgia. And this is about 497 million years old, coming from the Conasaga Formation. This is another impression of a trilobite, and this one also comes from Floyd County up in northwest Georgia. This is Arathia antiquata, and this is about uh, 505 million years old, coming from the Middle Cambrian. So we do actually find impressions and soft body remains of trilobites from uh, northwest Georgia during the uh, early, I'm sorry, during the middle portions of the Cambrian and during the later portions of the Cambrian from 505 to 497 million years ago, when Georgia was covered under a long, shallow sea called the Iapetus Ocean that would later become the Atlantic. We also find things like Depositions of sandstones and limestones during that time. So once we start to get into the late or division, I'm sorry, once we start to actually get to the late Cambrian, we actually start to see a deposition of sandstones and limestones during that time. And one of the rock units that we actually do find here in Georgia are things called, uh, or is a rock unit called a Knox Dolomite. And the Knox Dolomite actually does preserve stromatolite fossils. So this is what we call the Knox group. But there's a rock unit within the Knox group called the Copper Ridge Dolomite. And the Copper Ridge Dolomite preserves things like chert, which is a form of quartz. But that chert preserves stromatolite fossils. So this one doesn't come from Georgia, but it gives you an example of what a stromatolite looks like. These, this is a stromatolite from Wyoming, and stromatolites are actually line, lineations of algae. So you can see the lines here. This is what the algae would have been. It would have grown upwards to the sunlight to feed. So these animals would have, uh, would have used photosynthesis to convert their... Um, to, to feed. And we find a lot of stromatolites. So Georgia has a strom, uh, has a few uh, different stromatolite fossils. Um, this typically just gives you an example of what a stromatolite looks like. 
in order to really piece together Georgia's paleontology and Georgia's fossil record, we have to actually use other fossils from different states because we may not have things that may be well preserved. So we have to use other fossils in order to determine, in order to tell Georgia's fossil record, in order to tell Georgia's history. Here's another cut impression. So this is a cut version of a stromatolite fossil. So you can see the lineations of the algae that would have grown um, over 500 million years ago. In fact, stromatolites are actually some of the oldest known multicellular fossils in their history. But the fossils that are, but the stromatolite fossils that are preserved in Georgia are about 500, about 400 million years ago. So these are pretty interesting fossils, and again, probably some of the oldest known multicellular fossils in their history. And it's really cool that we actually find stromatolite fossils right here in the state that I call home. Other fossils from the Cambrian period include other things from the Conestoga Formation, which includes things like this. This is a fossil, or what is what some paleontologists determine to be a fossil, is a fossil sponge called Brexella, and they're, and they're actually preserved in chert. So these are actually silica-based sponges that would have existed in the Cambrian Oceans during Georgia about 500 million years ago. In these were actually described by the per by the same person who actually described the Burgess Shale, which is Charles Dolittle Walcott in the 19th century, in the early 19th century. And he actually would have thought that these actually were early jellyfish. But now paleontologists recognize that these weren't jellyfish at all, that these were probably early sponges. Some paleontologists suggest that these aren't early sponges at all, but what other some paleont what other paleontologists believe that they were probably just chert nodules, but it's still an ongoing debate. Here is another sponge right here. These these two specimens are actually found in the Conestoga Formation, but it's found in a different state, and they're found in uh, eastern Alabama in Cherokee County. But these are this is another sponge. This is called Ophelia globosa, and this is also a sponge that was found in the Conestoga Formation in Cherokee County. But they're also found in uh, Floyd County, Georgia, and in Murray County, Georgia, as well. So we see a lot of different changes in the Cambrian period, and now we transition on to the Ordovician period, which started about 450 million years ago. This is what we call the Upper Ordovician period. And the life actually changes, so we do find things like trilobites and still in, still in existence in the Ordovician, but we still actually see a transition. Um, so Georgia during that time was still under a shallow sea, so transgressions and regressions, the coming back in the um, coming back in the seas and the redrawing of the seas have changed over millions of years. And so when we actually start to go into another different type of regression, or when the sea starts to come back, we actually start to see a rise in sea level, and different animals start to appear during that time. So brachiopods uh, first appeared in the Cambrian period, but they really started to started to diversify within the Ordovician. And brachiopods kind of look like clams, but they're not exactly clams. They have their they're in their own group. Um, these are these specimens come from the Chickamauga limestone, which is Upper Ordovician in age, and this comes from Trenton, Georgia. And this is about 450 million years old. So if I get a little bit closer, you can see things that kind of look like seashells, and these are what we call brachiopods. And Chickamauga limestone was deposited about 420 million years ago, and this is when Georgia was still covered under a long, under a shallow sea that preserved these remains of sea life during that time. And so North America during that time was still under a shallow sea during the Ordovician, and the animals that would have inhabited Georgia during that time would have been things like brachiopods, which have been some of the fossils that I showed you here. It also would have been things like crinoids and bryozoans, and also some of the very first corals in the fossil record. So I have a couple of fossils here that fossils here that demonstrate what animals inhabited northwest Georgia in Trenton County during that time. And here's another brachiopod. So this one is actually out of the limestone. Um, this one doesn't come from Georgia, but it does come from a formation called the Leapers Formation, which is still later division and is found in Nashville, uh, Nashville, Tennessee. So this kind of gives you an example of what a brachiopod looks like. So uh, these brachiopods would have actually been preserved, and same thing with the trilobites, would have preserved their skeletons out of hard parts, out of calcium carbonate. And calcium carbonate was very abundant. It was very abundant to form these limestones and to form the skeletons of things like corals and brachiopods, or at least the articulate brachiopods living today, um, living. And another fossil that's found is called horn coral. This one is found in Tennessee. But here's another piece of horn coral that's actually found in Trenton County, Georgia, up in northwest Georgia, and that is a piece of horn coral there. Um, these are known as solitary corals or rugose corals. 
And here is a brachiopod from Trenton County up in northwest Georgia. So these are later division in age. Another fossil that we typically come across are things like called bryozoans. Bryozoans are actually related to brachiopods because they have the same feeding structure called a lophophore. And this is a bryozoan found up in northwest Georgia in Trenton County. And here is a bigger, more better well-preserved bryozoan that's actually found in the Arnheim Formation in Ohio. So if you can, if you can, if the uh, you can look closer, you can actually see the tiny little holes, and this is where the animal would have lived in. Um, brachiopods are, I'm sorry, uh, bryozoans are often referred to as moss animals because they cover a lot of things. In fact, you'll typically find bryozoans encrusting um, brachiopods and corals and things of that nature. And these are some of the more common fossils that you typically will find. They typically are well-preserved fossils that are composed of calcium carbonate, just like brachiopods and corals. Some other fossils that you may come across in the northwest region, northwestern region of Georgia are things probably called cephalopods. And cephalopods are actually some of the dominant animals that would have inhabited the late Ordovician seas. So this one doesn't come from Georgia, this one comes from Canada, but it kind of gives you an example of what was here during the late Ordovician in Georgia. So cephalopods like these, these straight-sailed cephalopods were the dominant predators during that time. You can actually see the lines in that line you can actually see or you may be able to see a small hole running down the middle right here this is what we call the siphuncle the siphuncle actually connects the uh, the rings or the, the the shell together so there would have been chambers to help the animal float in the water but it actually helped it used for buoyancy so cephalopods, bryozoans, and brachiopods are very, very common fossils that you will typically find in the later Ordovician seas when Georgia was covered under a shallow ocean during that time. So we've mentioned the Cambrian, and now we're going on to the, and now we went through the Ordovician, and now we will actually start to go through the entire, the half part of the Paleozoic era. So I'll be with you back with you with another episode.